Welcome back. Well, let's focus on Atul Auto. That was a star in yesterday's trading session after they reported their numbers. To understand what's the outlook from here on, we're joined by Mr. Jitendra Adia, who is the president of finance at Atul Auto. Uh, hi, Mr. Adia. Good morning and good to see you win. Well, we have been uh, you know, trying to get some numbers out of you. And now the numbers are showing up. You're already doing more than 2,500 units per month. My question to you is, will things improve from year on? And by the end of the year, what will you end up at? I think you were hinting earlier that things continue to improve in the second half of the year. So you'll be closer to around that 45 to 50,000 odd. Do you want to revise that number? And where do we end this year at? Very good morning to you. Uh, yes, uh, happy to say that uh, we are able to set the correct tone for the year. Yes, the first estimate is to go pre-COVID level, which used to be uh, close to 4,000 units per month. And uh, I'm happy that we were able to uh, start the year with the right and uh, correct tone. All okay, right. So, 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 sir, when do you get to this 4,000 uh, per month? By which, uh, which month do you think? Do you think it will be somewhere in the middle of the financial year? And also, if you could tell us, what do you end this year with? It's really difficult to give you the exact prediction of the number, but yes, uh, on this uh, path and uh, on the way, yes, definitely uh, if we target to achieve the COVID level, so it used to be in a festival season that is coming anywhere between mid of the year and anywhere between second and third quarter, I believe that we will be able to post good volume. All right. No, because uh, pre-COVID, FI19, for the entire year, you did 50,049 units. The year after that, FI20 as well, you did around 44,000 units. So just wanted to know whether that's the range we should be looking at, between 44 and 50,000. If more specific, going by your 100, 48,000 is something that one can look at, right? Yeah. Uh, see, uh, let's understand what kind of product portfolio we are having post-COVID. Uh, Pre-COVID, we were more into the diesel uh, three dealers. Hmm. COVID, we have a complete uh, range of products that is uh, diesel, alternate fuel, and uh, EV, EV of both the categories that is uh, L3, L5. And with uh, our uh, swappable battery solution and tie up with Honda, I believe that this year definitely we are going to post uh, not only good volume, but we will be able to definitely, you know, see the vehicles for coming years to mm. the more dividend on it. So, could you break up, you know, this quarter, uh, uh, you've done close to around 6,600 units. Uh, this month, in the month of June, you've done around 2,600 units itself. Could you break the volumes up in terms of exports, petrol, diesel and EVs that you've done so far? And what's the outlook for this year? My revenue from uh, domestic and export point of view, uh from export comes somewhere close to 10%, which is again, historically, we were doing around 10% uh, across, you know, all four, five years uh, in history. Uh, about uh, fuel, uh, yes, EV contributes somewhere close to uh, 30%, which is uh, going to be the next gen uh, vehicle. Alternate fuel and diesel, that contributes around 70%. Got it. All right. Uh... Mr. Adya, what about, uh, you know, operating leverage? That should start playing out, right? What are the pr prospective margins you get to? Volumes will pick up, input costs are fairly stable, and your mix is uh, rapidly changing as well. So what should the margin band be? We're not asking you for an exact number. We want a band, though. Like Sanders said, see, Aturoto pre-COVID was under expansion, and at, exactly at the time when COVID hit India, we were ready with our uh, capacity of 120,000 units. So mm. uh, this year, I believe uh, our focus would be definitely to uh, just, you know, have the volume first and gain the market set. Uh, obviously, uh, when uh, numbers will go, margin is likely to improve. But let me put it like that, that uh, we are seeding the products into the market, alternate fuel as well as EV. Uh, margin profile is likely to remain same as uh, we used to enjoy uh, pre-COVID level, but few phases uh, uh, point here and there. Difficult to give you the exact prediction about margin going forward, but uh, raw material and uh, uh, scale, that is going to give us uh, more benefit. So early teens, maybe 11% odd, that's a number we should work with, early teens? 
uh, I leave it up to you. <laughs> we, okay, we no, so, double that. digit, double digit margins is doable. Double that, digit, at that least ten percent. Yes, that is what ten percent. So 10% at least is what you could do, give and take, say, 50, 100 basis points on either which direction. So we'll hold you at double-digit margin for now. But by the end of the year, Mr. Adya, do you think you lift your bat and say, we have scored a 50, we are back at 50,000 uh, tons? Is that a possibility, at least as of now, going by the entire scenario? Looking looking at, uh, you know, uh, current year's uh, overall external as well as the uh, external environment, I'm, I'm, I'm really, you know, positive about it. But let's, uh, you know, complete the quarter number two and I believe that okay. we will have more visibility and clarity. Okay, Let, let's talk about, uh, you know, two more important things for uh, you going forward. One is the L5 approval that you were expecting. L3, you got that accounts for nearly 30% of your sales. So, uh, L5 approval, you said you were expecting that to come by in the very near future. What's the update on that? And once that comes by, how much of an acceleration can we see in your volumes? Let me let me just you know give a small uh, correction over here. This uh, numbers are a combination of L3, L5. That is point number one. Uh, all the products are being approved, whether it is L5 or L3. It has been homologated. It has been approved by the institutes, and uh, we we are all set to go into the market. Uh, yes. Uh, same approval were pending for uh, L5 category, which is I think underway. We expect uh, approval any time. All right. And final question then from my end. Uh, you know, you've recently incorporated a new subsidiary by the name Atulli's Private Limited, which intends to do the business of purchase, acquire, maintain, operate and manage various type of vehicles. What is the kind of business potential that you see here? How much can it boost your business by over uh, the next few years? See, the leasing uh, uh, and uh, battery as a service, uh, leasing the vehicle uh, on a rental basis, that is going to be the business of next day. And uh, with that, uh, you know, anticipation that we will be able to just, you know, roll out uh, B2B operation with, uh, you know, uh, operating lease. We have incorporated this company. Uh, we are working out the business plan, maybe during our next, next interaction. I will be able to reveal more details of it. All right, Mr. Adia. Well, uh, your shareholders will be waiting by to see these numbers and hold you to this guidance. But for the time being, it's been one of the big outperforming stocks of this year. And we look forward to chatting up with you at the end of the coming month as well to get an update on the sales numbers. Well, for the time being, though, we'll have to wrap up on this edition of Chartbusters. But you stay with us because the team of trading R is waiting by.